Today I want to share with you how to make a batter bread. This is the easiest bread you'll ever make and it can be ready from start to finish in an hour and a half. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, you're gonna love making this bread because not only is it easy, it makes a wonderful sandwich bread and also really great toast. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is get a loaf pan. I've got a metal one here. Metal or glass is fine, either or. And you want to grease it really well. I've greased mine with butter. And my loaf pan is approximately 5 inches by 9 inches, the interior measurement. Uh, but if yours is a little bigger or a little smaller, don't worry, it'll work out fine. Now we'll go over the ingredients, but don't worry, you don't need to write anything down because if you open the description under this video, you'll see the word recipe with a link next to it. And if you click on that, it'll take you over to my website, same name as my YouTube channel, Mary's Nest, and you'll be able to read the recipe online or print it out. The ingredients that you're going to need are three cups of flour, and you can use all-purpose flour or you can use bread flour. Next, you're going to need one and a half cups of warm liquid. I'm using whole milk because it makes for a really nice texture in the bread, uh, but you can certainly use skim or nonfat milk or anything in between, or you can even use water. Now, I've not tried making this with some of the alternative milks like oat milk and almond milk and whatnot, but I think they might work, so it'd be worth experimenting. You're also going to need two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Now, if you have the little package of yeast, that's the exact amount that you need. If you're measuring it out from a larger container, then it's two and one quarter teaspoons. And you can use active dry yeast or instant yeast. Either will work. You're also going to need a tablespoon of sugar. I'm just using a plain white sugar. It's organic and unbleached. Uh, but if you're farther along on your journey from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen and you've already incorporated using sucanat as your main sugar, which simply stands for sugar cane natural, it's just dried cane juice, dried sugar cane juice, you can certainly use that. But for beginners, if what you've got is white sugar, that's perfectly fine, just one tablespoon. And then you're also going to need a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I'm just using a fine ground sea salt. And you're also going to need three tablespoons of softened butter. Now for your warm liquid, you want it to be warm enough that if you put your finger in, a clean finger, it would just feel like warm bath water. You don't want it to be super hot. And if you do have a thermometer and you want to test the actual temperature of your water, you would want it to be 110 degrees Fahrenheit if you're using active dry yeast. If you're using instant dry yeast, which is a little forgiving on the temperature, you can have your water as warm as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. But really, if you can just put a clean finger in there and it feels like warm bath water, you're, you're all set. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and put our warm milk into our bowl. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our butter. And you want your butter to be nice and soft. Mine was even starting to melt a little bit. It was near the, near the stove. And then you want to go ahead and just sprinkle in your sugar. And then just give this a good little whisk around. It'll help the butter start to melt in the warm milk. Well, that butter has melted nicely. And now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take our yeast and we're just going to sprinkle it right on top of our warm milk mixture. And we're just gonna give that about a minute to just kind of sit there and start to dissolve. Well, my yeast is dissolved. And next I'm gonna take my salt and I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that into my flour and just mix it around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take about two thirds of this flour. I'm just gonna leave about a third behind to start. And then you can use a wooden spoon, or if you've got one of these uh, handy dandy dough whisks, this works great too. And all you're gonna do is just start incorporating the flour into your liquid. And all you wanna do is just keep mixing this around until you've got all the flour moistened. It's gonna be a very wet, sticky dough. It's basically a batter, 
And that's where the name batter bread comes from, because it's not like a traditional dough that's drier and that you're going to have to knead. This is no knead. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add in the rest of my flour. And then I'll just continue to mix this to just get the rest of that flour incorporated. Now when you're done mixing this, it's just going to be a wet, shaggy dough. It's not going to clean the bowl like a lot of uh, other doughs do, but that's perfect. This is exactly the way it should be. The next thing you want to do is dampen your hands with some water. We don't want to add any extra flour. And we're going to go ahead and pick up our dough, and it's going to be very sticky. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put this right into our baking pan. So we've got our batter in the pan. Now we just want to wet our hands and wet our fingers, and we just want to smooth this out just so that we get it fitted into the pan. And just want to do this with wet hands so that the dough won't stick to us and we're not adding any additional flour. Now once you get this all flattened out in the pan, what I like to do is take a knife and just score it right down the middle. And I'm just going to put my knife in about an inch deep and I'm just going to score it like this right down the middle. Now that I've got it all flattened down and scored down the middle, I'm just going to cover this with a piece of parchment paper. You can use anything you want. This I know won't stick, so it works well. I'm going to just tuck it away in a warm place and I'm going to check on it in about 30 minutes. You're probably going to need anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to get it to rise. And all you're looking for is for it to rise right up to the edge of your pan, not above. Well, I let this rise for 30 minutes in a warm place, and it actually even rose a little more than it needed to. It's getting a little rounded on top, but you don't need that at all. All you're going to look for is to just get it right up to the rim. So I got a little distracted, <laughs> but this is going to be fine. So don't worry if you let it go a little longer and it gets a little above the rim, it's still going to be fine. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and put this in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven, and we're going to put it on on the middle rack. Now we're going to let that bake for about 45 minutes, but everybody's oven is different. So at about 35 minutes, just check it and see how it's coming along. And if you feel it's a little over browning on top, you can easily tent it and continue to let it bake if it's still not thoroughly baked. Well, I just took my bread out of the oven and it's looking glorious. Now, if you like a soft crust, this has got nice little bit of a crisp to it. If you like it real soft, right at this time when it's nice and hot and you've just taken it out of the oven, just uh, rub the top with some butter and that'll keep it nicer. It'll make it nice and soft. Now I also tented my bread when it was browning in the oven. I have a very small oven and so I do need to be careful that my bread doesn't over brown. Uh, so it's, it may depend on the size oven you have, but as I said, keep an eye on it. If, it's, if it looks like it might uh, be potentially over browning after the full 45 minutes of baking, you can always go ahead and tent it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out of the pan. I don't want to leave it in the pan too long. Oh, it looks glorious. And let's just give it a tap here. Yeah, see? Can you hear that? It'll sound hollow when you tap it and you'll know that it's done. And now I'm just going to put it down here to cool a bit. And we'll just give it a few minutes to cool. And then we'll slice it and see how it looks inside. Well, this is still quite warm, but it's hard to resist warm bread. So let's go ahead and just start slicing this and we'll see how it came out. Oh, it just slices beautifully. Oh, look at this glorious bread. Look at that. I think you're just going to love this bread. And it makes amazing toast. You toast up a slice of this. Uh, for breakfast with butter and jam. Oh, you can't go wrong. Alrighty, let's give it a taste. Oh, look at this. It's just beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> so soft. So tasty. Mmm how you're going to enjoy this. Now, if you would like to learn how to make more no-knead breads like this that are very simple and ready in a relatively short period of time, 
be sure to click on this video over here and I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.